Welcome to the fourth and final video in this series. We're building a PyDP11. This is a scaled replica of the Digital Equipment Corporation's seminal mini computer, the PDP11. In part one, we prepared the Raspberry Pi which drives the replica. In part two, we soldered the dozens of fiddly passive components. In part three, we finished up all of our soldering and now it's time to assemble everything and test it out. Let's continue the build. We're taking the board back to the workbench and on our way, we want to pick up the case shell and that front panel. The front panel is made of perspex. It should have one side painted and one side covered in protective plastic. Time for the big reveal. Peel back the plastic. And there you have a fair facsimile of a PDP-1170 panel. Now don't bend the plastic wrap just yet. We're going to reuse a bit. Set the shell face down on the bench. Lay the panel into it face down, and that's the painted side toward you. Our kit should include a set of metal standoffs. Screw the panel down to the shell with those standoffs. Don't over tighten, you could crack the panel. Grab that piece of plastic you just peeled off. There should be a bit of it with a big hole through. We're going to use that bit to protect the painted side of the panel. Cut that hole out with a bit of excess. Now find the lock in your parts pile. Get its nut too. Thread that lock up through the hole. Put the plastic over it, followed by the nut, and tighten that nut down. That should be all the prep that we need on the case, so we can set that aside. Okay, time to fish out those little plastic standoffs and those smallest of screws. You won't want more than hand tight here, so no tools required. Lift the LED guide off the front of the board again. You should see four holes in the middle where the pie would be on the other side. You're going to put one of those small screws through each of three of these holes. So do one at a time, prod the screw through and then gently thread the nylon standoff onto it. It's easy to cross thread these, so don't force them. The pressure of a finger on the screw head and a finger tight on the other side, that should be enough. You'll want to make sure that you populate both holes of the opposite side of the Pi from the GPIO port. The port will provide some support all by itself. You can use the third screw on its side. Now take your Pi, locate that on the mounting holes against the standoffs and the GPIO port and gently push it home. There should be three tiny nuts to go with those studs now poking through the pipe. So patiently thread those on, trying not to cross thread, and again, finger tight should do here. Your hardware supply should be down to some large self-tapping screws and five machine screws and nuts. The machine screws go all around the corners and then one in the, the middle at the top. These will locate into the case shell. You need to mount all five and thread the nuts onto these facing forward. The nuts are actually used only as spacers. So uh, when you put the screws in, you want to spin the nuts on the whole way and then maybe back them off part of a turn, okay? Uh, and the idea here is that they're only just tight enough so that they turn when you go to screw them into the case. We're nearly at the end now. Grab your case shell, put it down on the bench. Now, gently lower the board assembly into it. You're pretty safe holding it by the pipe. Try to make sure you're lining up the screws with the threads in the case. Now try tightening just one down until it about bites. You want to leave it loose enough to adjust in a minute. Do a second corner so that now you've located the whole thing. Then you can go around all the other screws. Once you've done that, turn it over and have a look at the switches to see whether they line up with the moldings on the case. If you're happy with that, great. Otherwise you can budget it a little bit this way or that way before going back and tightening the screws down. Turn the case over. I put mine on its stand so I can see better. We need to mount the knobs. Other than a couple of big self-tappers, they should be the only hardware left. Each knob is fixed in place with a little grub screw. Using the screwdriver, back the grub screw out just enough to allow the knob to go over the rotary switch post. The grub screw should go into the flat of the rotary switch shaft. Lift the knob up at least two millimeters from the surface of the face plate, so there's a little bit of clearance. If things flex, this will keep the knob from scratching the face plate. Then cinch the screw down just tight enough to hold it. Do that all again with the second knob. One last step. This is the back case panel. If you already know how you want to do the cables, then you can do all the cable mounting and tidying up now. I had made up my mind which mods I really wanted to make, so instead I mounted the back panel just to get the screws tapped in. Now 
and I undid everything and punched out one hole big enough for just the USB power lead. Once I'd done that, I could button everything back up. Power on! A few seconds pass before the boot completes and the lamps come up. Time to test the switches. Flip the halt switch down. Now that should stop the machine. If it does, then the switch checks out. Move the switch back up, then toggle the continue switch. If everything starts moving again, you're doing well. Halt the machine again. Now twist that top rotary dial until it's in the confiz position. With all the data switches 0 to 21 down, lift the deposit switch. That should clear the bottom row of LEDs. Now that validates the deposit switch is working. So the next thing we'll do is press the load address switch. And that should enter the switches into the contents of the top row of LEDs. That verifies the load address switch. Then lift the first data switch, followed by the load address switch. That lights the first lamp in the top row and proves the switch is working. Set each switch in the data row and do the load address again and again. Each LED should light up as it's set. Now clear all the data switches. We're going to have a quick test of the white switch. That's the test lamp switch. And when you lift it up, you should see all the lamps come on. Last major switch to test is the hidden button on the top rotary knob. Make sure the halt switch is up and then press that button. The effect is to jump to a new disk image. The first six switches on the right, pick which one of the disk images you're going to run. Since we've cleared all the data switches, we get a choice of zero, which happens to be what we were running in the first place. Effectively, this is just a reset. If that all tests out, you're finished the build. So the last thing you do is shut down the machine. Once again, setting the halt switch, if you press that top knob again, instead of resetting into a different image, it's going to shut down the Pi. Give it about 30 seconds before taking the power off, okay? Instructions on how to use the Pi DP11 are in the manual and you can download that from Oscar's site. But for now, let me thank you all for watching this series. If you thought this was useful, give it a like. And if vintage technology and computing are your thing, please subscribe to this channel. We'll have plenty more videos coming up.